the very destiny. And I was born in Japan, and I grew up in Japan, and hardly ever went out of my own town. And then if we saw foreigners walking down on the street, we um, used to run around pointing at them, you know, shouting, Gaijin, Gaijin, which means outsider. Anything outside of my own world, own little world, looks so huge and scary to me. So, standing here in front of you today, I would never imagine anything like this would happen to me. I would have been so scared about this if I knew that. But then today, our world is changing. We can travel around the world very easily these days and meet people from different countries, different cultures, who speak different languages. And we can connect with everybody so easily on the internet, anybody from around the world. Our world indeed is shrinking. But there's also another reason why the world is shrinking. The size of the planet hasn't changed. But then now, there are 7 billion, over 7 billion of us in this world trying to get more, trying to live better lives. When we look around, we see these pictures. We all know this, that more and more people in our world are going hungry. And at the same time, we are chopping down millions of trees each day. And when we think we are doing better and doing well, suddenly we get hit by natural disasters or financial crisis. So what's really happening? But today is not about problems, and today is not about being overwhelmed by seeing these pictures. Today is about seeing things through different perspectives and realizing the power of who we are. So, before we talk about our world, why don't we talk about ourselves? Something close to us. What do we want? What are we really looking for? Let's ask that question. I ask this question many times, and then um, today I'd like to share a couple of very common ones. One is this. Many people say they want money, of course, because in this modern world, suddenly we need some of this to keep living. But how much do we need, and how much do we actually want? So let's say we want to become a millionaire. And becoming a millionaire seems to be something really big to many of us. It's like a dream. But how much does it actually take to become a millionaire? It's this. That's the amount of money we need to save each month. From the time we graduate from school, let's say about the age of 22, to when we retire at 65. If we save that amount every day, every month, and then get 4% interest, then we can become a millionaire. Maybe it's not so unrealistic. But then there is an interesting number, which is this. That is the average amount of money people save in the United States, the adult. But if this is the average, then many of us are probably spending so much more than what we earn. So, when we think about the big future, it's about the little thing which we do that counts. There's another thing which most of us want more of, which is this, time. We say we don't have enough time, so we can't do this yet. I sometimes say that to my own kids, saying, I'm too busy, I don't have the time, could you talk to me later? But why? Why don't we have enough time? Well, let me show you something. Well, do you know what this is? Maybe you are very familiar with this, yes. That's Taj Mahal. So, over 350 years ago, it took 20,000 men, 22 years, to build this one building. Isn't it amazing? But today, I show you another building. Anybody knows what this building is? Well, it may not be such a huge, you know, um, wonderful, beautiful looking building, but this is a world 
um, very old building, Kim on Guinness Book. This building, which is a hotel in China, took six days to build it, including the internal settings and everything. Isn't that amazing? So now, with the power of technology, we save so much time. Now we have so much more time to spend. But these things we think will save our time. This is the amount of time average individuals spend in front of these gadgets, including the people who don't use those things for work. So no wonder that we don't have enough time. It's very interesting to see when we look at the concept of having. Then quite often, when we think we need to have more or we want to have more, the first thing we do is to go and get it and try so hard to get it as well. But as a result of getting and having, often what happens next is a little unexpected. Because it often is this, the cycle of getting, having, and losing. It's not just about losing because we spend it or because we ate it, but it's sometimes the things we so wanted to have in the first place, the moment we have it, we lose the interest. We don't want it so much anymore. So we created the world and life which cycle around through the concepts of getting, having, and losing. But nobody likes to lose. So why don't we change that? Why don't we change this picture and change our losing into giving and then turn our getting into receiving? What would happen? If you have a choice to live in a world where everybody is trying to get more and more and more, and as a result of having more, everybody is losing. Or do you want to live in a world where everybody is trying to give more and share more, and as a result, having more and receiving more? Which world do you want to be part of? I think the answer is quite clear and simple. Well, there's a good news. There are many people in our world who notice the importance of giving. So, more and more people started up their own causes or own charity organizations. Let me show you this. The number of charity organizations in many countries have doubled, nearly doubled, in many countries in last decade. That means if we have, you know, twice as many people working toward making a difference, then we have half the number of problems, right? <laughs> so the number of problems in the last decade must be half compared to where we started. Is that true? Well, it may not be, but what we recognized here was that it wasn't about lack of caring people, which we had a problem with. It was about lack of connections. We realized it was just lack of connections. So these days, when we look at our world, we sometimes see these things, that we see our world in black and white way, and say, these are the problems which we have, and we need to fight with the problems. But what if? What if we started to look at things a little differently? So let me show you interesting numbers over here. It costs $6 billion to give education to all the children around the world. And it costs $9 billion to give sanitation and water access to everyone around the world. And it costs $12 billion to give maternity health for all women. And it costs $13 billion to give basic nutrition and health support to everyone. These are still big numbers. I don't think you have a, you know, pocket enough money to fix all these problems by yourself. But it's an interesting way to look at the things we face. Because now, 
let me show you something else that connects. The cosmetic industry in the United States is $8 billion industry. Ice cream industry in Europe is $11 billion industry. And this one is interesting. Business entertainment in Japan is $75 billion industry. That's where I come from. <laughs> and alcoholic drinks um, in the US, that's $105 billion industry. So when we look at, when we start to look at these pictures, we start to recognize that we actually already have the power to transform what's happening. Now, many years ago, I recognized the power of business. And even though I didn't know much about business, but I started to um, have one myself. And when I started, I looked like this. That was 11 years ago, in 2011, that was 2001, and that's my three-month-old baby daughter, Myra. Sorry, I mentioned your name, Myra. <laughs> but um, the reason why I started, and that's probably not such a perfect timing to start a business, if you are normal. <laughs> but I, I, I couldn't find a better time because when I saw my own child in my arm and look at her face and I was so, so happy. It was the happiest moment in my life, the most beautiful time of my life. And that time, I started to see faces in my mind and faces of the children I saw when I was traveling around when I was younger. And the children who didn't have a parent, who were living on the street, who didn't have a school to go to. I started to see those faces and realized, if I have a choice to live a life, I wanted to live a life that is more than just giving what I wanted to give to my own daughter. But I wanted to do something. But I didn't know what. That's why I started the business. And because I came from a food background myself, I started the food business. I didn't know anything else. So I started food business with my little daughter on my back and worked hard and hard and hard every day. And many years later, about six years later, um, I realized that our business was growing and our food business turned into a food production company in Australia, which was distributing food products to over 150 stores um, health food stores and supermarkets in Australia. So we were getting bigger and growing. But at the end of the day, I realized we were still too busy and we weren't making a difference. Because the reason I started food business was because I wanted to see everybody having nourishing food every day, including the customers we serve, but also beyond. We wanted to give back to the children who didn't have the parents to give them what they needed. So instead of focusing on one day when we build a successful business, we will give back a lot, I asked the question, when is that day? When is it coming? And that time, an interesting thought came to me. What if? I asked, what if? It wasn't about giving as a result of being successful, but what if giving was part of what we did every day? What if every time we sold a packet of our food, somebody else received a meal? What if? What if? What if? And then this concept turned into the idea of buy one, give one. We imagine the world. Every time somebody goes to have a cup of coffee, somebody in need receives access to clean water. Every time an author sells a book, a tree gets planted. So let me just give you a quick way to look at what we do now through the concept of the one So we created an initiative, the one in 2007. And then businesses come to us these days bringing different products and services. 
So then they have different ways they want to be back. We identify different projects around the world, find the um, suitable, what we call partners, we select them, we list them, and then every month or every quarter, uh, depending on the business cycle, businesses give back. And 100% of their giving goes to the project. That's the B1G1. One. one example is that this art gallery, uh, Tabib Gallery, joined us four years ago, and then every single month they'll be giving. Every time they sell a painting, a blind person receives support for a month. So four years later, they made a difference. 8,854 days worth of support to the blind people. Today, Viewer Zero World is like this. We have over 600 businesses around the world coming together to make a difference, supporting projects from over 30 countries. And this morning, I checked what was happening, and this is the number, but that one is actually slightly outdated, so let me give you the number. Today, um, up to now, Viewer Zero Businesses together created 10,318,000 156 giving, micro giving activities around the world. And I see this world in this way. And it's the beehive. And the example of bee is very significant because they show us something we've forgotten to do, which is this. Bees pollinate flowers around the world every time they receive nectar. But the interesting thing about the bee is that they don't do this because they try to change their world or fight the problem. They do it because as a part of who they are, which is about habits. Habits can be only created through small actions. It's not just about one big action, but it's the small action which matters. And when we change our habit, we transform our destiny. We started by looking at these pictures, pictures of our world and problems. But what if we decided that from today, we look at these pictures, but start to see opportunities to give back? What world can we create together? Everything in our world has a reason and purpose. We are here for a reason. So imagine creating the world of giving, where everything we do makes a difference every second, every day, and in every way. Thank you.